grand jury in Manhattan has voted to indict former President Donald Trump. We don't know the charges yet as the indictment is sealed. The New York grand jury was looking into a hush money payment in 2016. This makes Trump the first former president to ever face criminal charges. And it isn't the only investigation he's facing. We went to Waco this past weekend, where Trump held his first rally for his 2024 campaign to find out what his supporters thought of his legal troubles. Two for 20 bucks, Waco rally shirts. I love Trump on the back, says Waco right at the bottom. It's great to be back in this beautiful and incredible state with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. Are you worried that these criminal investigations could complicate Trump's campaign? No, no. I think it's a great thing. I think You think it's a great thing? Yeah. I think it's going to just organize us more. I, I mean, honest to God, I think if, if people see what, what the Democrats are continuing to do, they see the false narrative, they know it's BS. I mean, if, if there was really a chance of it going to trial, which it isn't, zero. Read my lips. It ain't gonna never go to trial, okay? Trump can show up, they could handcuff him, they could have him stand on his head, it ain't gonna make no difference. But how about this? Two nights before the rally, Trump lashed out at the prosecutor in the hush money case, posting on Truth Social that a charge against him could result in, quote, death and destruction. Trump is warned of death and destruction. He said the other day, if he's indicted, what do you think he means by that? He said what? He said that there'll be death and destruction. I don't know. I don't know what he means. That's, I mean, really, some random crap comes out of his mouth all the time. Does any of that concern you, though? No. No. No, no you know, there are idiots, right? There's idiots everywhere. So, like, he, the, some people will take the words that he says and they will use them and they will, like, take them t completely literally. But you don't think he does it intentionally to incite No, violence. I think it's how, like, how language is used. All of a sudden now, in the past couple of years, it's since January 6th, basically, they're taking everything so literally as to what everybody says. It feels like Trump himself is raising the temperature and making threats that his own supporters would turn violent if he's indicted, if he's arrested. When he says that, I genuinely don't think he's actually trying to incite violence or, like, anger. I just think he's trying to, like, maybe fuel up those people who are, like, working for them, like, working for their kids, whatever. I think he's trying to, like, just incite, like, a, a, a like more fuel, give more fire to, like, his campaign. But I don't think he actually means in his comments that, like, there's going to be death and destruction. I just think he means, like, we need to be ready to go. Everybody who supports him needs to be ready to, like, give their all to his campaign. So when he says there'll be death and destruction, you're saying he doesn't literally mean no, death I, and destruction. Yeah, exactly. I think, I think it's just more of a metaphor to like get his supporters, like it's more of like a, let's get rallied, let's get hyped, let's get like energized, like this is, we have to do this now. But I don't think when he says death and destruction by any means is he talking about people actually dying or like, property being destroyed. I don't think he means that. But that's exactly what happened on January 6th. That is, yeah, that, that is exactly what happened on January 6th. But I would hope, me personally, I would hope that like we wouldn't, we wouldn't go back to that. But I really think he just, he's trying to get the people energized, saying like, this is our time, this has to happen now. This is what's best for our country. And I think the amount of people here really reflects that. It probably makes me the most innocent man in the history of our country. Friends of mine say that. How do you think Trump supporters should respond if he's indicted? I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous about that because Trump just said the other day, like, go out and protest when he was talking about the indictment. And I think a lot of people, if he does get arrested, are going to a protest. We shouldn't be scared to protest, don't get me wrong. That's our constitutional right. We, we should be able to come out and speak our mind, but they will capitalize on any type of mistake that we make. Are you talking about January 6th? I am, yeah. I don't think that would have happened if, if none of the government's inf infiltrates were there. I don't think there would have been a riot. I don't think the majority of Trump supporters are violent antagonists. I don't think that is our base at all. But all you need is a little bit of a little bit of push sometimes to get people to do the wrong thing, and anything could happen. Thank you, Texas. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Michael Learmonth, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. 
Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.